zinc is in this. This zinc is going to act to change my oxidation number of the vanadium because remember whenever we have redox, we have to have reduction and oxidation. We have to have both of them. So I'm going to write out the first reaction that we have and you can write it on your sheet of paper too. And that's just dealing with the zinc. Clearly, it's zinc in its solid form. It's not bonded to anything else. So what's the oxidation number of something when it's not bonded to anything else? Zero, Zero absolutely. So I have my zinc, my zinc solid. It's gonna turn into the ion because it's gonna bond to some stuff as I'm going through this. What is the most common oxidation number of zinc? Yeah. Um, Zn2 plus one. Oh, come on, yes. Um, and if you didn't know that as quickly as Anna did, write yourself a little note that Zn, even though it's a transition metal, it's always going to form a 2 plus oxidation number. Excellent job. Good, good, good. Um, is this balanced yet? No. no, it is not. What does it need? Electrons. Electrons. Do you, can you tell us, Anna, how many? Two electrons. Two electrons. Perfect. So, two electrons are going to go on that side. Is this oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. You've got it. So this is my oxidation half reaction. Cool. So if it is my oxidation half reaction, is it my oxidizing agent or my reducing agent? Reducing agent. Reducing. Nice. Okay, so that's my reducing agent, which means my vanadium through this process is going to be reduced. So it's going to be gaining electrons throughout all of that. Now we're going to look for specific colors. And we're starting out with ammonium metavandanate solution. That's this yellow stuff. Ta-da! This nasty stuff. I probably should be wearing gloves with it. But it's a pretty yellow, so the yellow one we're going to write down is V O 2 I need to check my thing 1 plus V O 2 1 plus that is the ion that is there I need you to figure out the oxidation number of just the vanadium so write it down on your sheet try to figure out we know oxygen we know the overall charge what is that vanadium going to be The oxygen is a negative two, there's two of them, so that's a negative four. I need a one plus overall, so I rearrange and I get, yes, this is, oxidation number is equal to a five. Wait, where did the five come from? Um, good question. So, I look at each part of it. I know since it's an ion that it's not equal to zero, it's equal to the charge of that ion, so it's a plus one. I have two of my oxygen, so I have two times the oxidation number of oxygen, that's a negative two, and I add to that what I don't know of my vanadium yet. Then I rearrange, I have x minus four is equal to a positive one. Rearranging further, x is equal to a positive five. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Good. Good, good, good. So that is our first one. When I put these together, we're initially going to see a greenish color. And that is not from my new ion. It's a combination of the yellow and the first ion that I get. No, excuse me. Which is blue in color. Let me get rid of this. So my next one is going to be blue. And it is VO with a 2 plus charge. So figure out the oxidation number for that one. Okay, look, you have it? Four. Yeah. Oh, God, thank you. The oxidation number is a four plus. Thank you. After that, and I'm going to write all the colors up here because it kind of gets a little funny the way that it goes. It's supposed to then turn into a blue-green. It's kind of difficult distinguishing between these two as we go through, um, but we do know that it's going on. And that is just a V3 positive. So the oxidation number, I don't even have to calculate it, it's just 3 positive.
and then it will turn a very lilac-y type purple. And that is a V2 plus. So what's my oxidation number? Two. Ooh, nice. Okay. So we see that I'm going from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2. Am I being oxidized or reduced? Reduced. Reduced. Nice. Absolutely. Reduction. We're going to get this first part started, and then we are going to go in the opposite direction with a different half reaction and hopefully go through the colors again. And maybe this time I will actually get to yellow at the end again. Hasn't been working so well for me today. So, turn this puppy on and up. So we get that initial greenish color. And that's from the mixing of the blue and the yellow that's still left over. That looks turning a bit more to the blue. Um, we stir things to increase what? Yeah, reaction rate. Thank you. See, we're studying for finals. -y. That's a nice blue. Yeah, isn't that a pretty one? So I think that is supposed to be our four plus. Or plus four. And then I think it should start going more green again. Assuming it works perfectly, which we all know from Murphy's Law, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. I think I see a little bit of green going there, perhaps. faster. And maybe not that fast because it's just pushing it all out. I think that's definitely more of the green blue. Yeah. Is it spinning? That's all? Yep. Yep, that's how it's doing. So inside the machine, there's a mechanism that has a magnet attached to it, and it just keeps spinning in there, and then that attaches basically to the magnet, and then the other one attracts and makes that one go. I think we're starting to turn to our purple. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit, anyways. A little bit more. to leave my purple for many, many, many hours, and it would stay purple. Then it would start going back to its original color. So without doing that turning yeah. over, it still would be purple? Yeah. Wow. For quite a few hours, anyways, is what my documents have told me. I have not tried it out myself yet. You well, guys what causes that to just stay purple? Um, just because it hasn't started going back in the opposite direction. The rate is slow. Put that way. Yeah. Gotta love color changes. Yeah. Color changes and explosions. That's chemistry for ya. Um, so the opposite reaction is not going to be reduction. What is it going to be? Oxidation. And what we use for that, rather than this oxidation half of the reaction, I'm going to get rid of my zinc here in a second by filtering it out. What I'm going to use is some hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, yep, H2O2. And it's not going to start 
decomposing into hydrogen and oxygen. There's going to be no gas formed. I'm not going to be able to take my wooden splint and go in and get it to light on fire again and then put it back in and light on fire again, like the guy did in the um, video. What I am going to get is some water. I would like for you, while I'm waiting for this, we've got that nice purple now, so I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to wait for it to settle a bit so that I can decant and filter. And then we can go in the opposite direction. But I want you to balance that for me. And this, again, is going to be the reduction path. Start with our dropwise addition of our hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to slow that down even a little bit more. Because we are already turning to our blue-green. That was only a few drops that it needed. So I don't need any more vanadiums on either side. I do need another oxygen though, so what do I add? Water. Water, absolutely, Ben. How many should I add? Yeah, one. One H2O. Two hydrogen ions on the other side. Two H1 pluses. So I have a three plus on this side. Two plus on that side. Electron on the hydrogen. Yeah, an electron on the side that has the hydrogen. Perfect. Now I can take this, and since this is going with my first half as I was being reduced, the other half of it is the oxidation, so I can combine the two. I can say, well, Zn becomes Zn two plus plus two electrons. Can I balance them straight up the way they are right now? And of course, it's turned to the red-brown. 